Okay, so today what we're going to talk about is the vertex form of a parabola. Okay, so when you classify a polynomial, a polynomial function, are, they are classified by the degree of the uh, polynomial. Now, the degree of the polynomial is its largest exponent. So take a look at the examples. It says classify the polynomials. All right, so we have f of x is equal to a. So now, this is a constant... function and the reason why it's a constant function is because there is no x in the polynomial so this is a degree of zero okay so the next one f of x is equal to mx plus b that's a linear function its largest exponent is one for the x so this is a first degree. And the next one, f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is a quadratic function. So notice that its largest exponent is 2, so it's a second degree polynomial. Okay, so now let's talk about the quadratic function. So f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So when we graph this, we get a parabola. Um, in a quadratic function, your a, b, and c values all have to be real numbers. Are all real numbers? And a cannot equal 0, because if a is equal to 0, then it's just linear. All right, now, if a, so that's the number that's in front of your x squared, is less than 0, which means it's negative, it opens down. The parabola opens down. Okay, or you could recall it's called concave down. Okay, so on your graph, it would open down like that. All right, if your A is positive, greater than 0, then, it, it, then it's concave up. So it opens up, okay, or concave up. Okay, so on your graph, it would go this way, concave up. All right, so it <clears throat> is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Right, so if I graph the basic y is equal to x squared, it is symmetric to the x-axis. It does have an axis of symmetry, so when you graph a parabola, and we graph a parabola, it has an axis of symmetry. It's, it's that invisible line that goes right down the middle Right, that's that would be called the axis of symmetry. There is a formula for the axis of symmetry that is x is equal to negative b over 2a. Okay, so take a look at the examples. I'm just going to move everything up. Okay, so it says, write the equation for the axis of symmetry. So remember, the axis of symmetry is an equation, and it does have to be x equals because it's a vertical line. It goes to the x-axis. All right, so we have f of x is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 7. So I want the axis of symmetry. Remember, that's x is equal to negative b over 2a. b is negative 8, so that means I'm going to get positive 8. Over 2 times a, a is 1. So I get x is equal to 8 over 2 is 4. That's my axis of symmetry. x is equal to 4. Uh, b, g of x is equal to 2x squared minus 7x plus 6. So that's x is equal to negative b over 2a. So that would be negative opposite of negative 7, which is 7, over 2 times 2, which is a. 
So we get x is equal to 7 over 4, which is 1.75. All right, and the last one, I have x squared minus 7. So x is equal to negative b over 2a. My b, there is no b value because b, remember, b, b is what's in front of x. There is no x, so that means my b is 0 over 2 times 1. So that means my axis of symmetry is x is equal to 0, which is the y-axis. Okay, so you did learn last year of a vertex form for a quadratic, for a parabola. It's a slightly different than this one. It's just another way, another vertex form. Uh, so you probably even forgot about the one from last year, so uh, it probably doesn't even make a difference. So it is f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. So your ver and, and a cannot equal 0, because if a is equal to 0, then it's just a constant function. All right, so your vertex, remember the vertex is your turning point. Let me write that down, turning point. So your vertex is h comma k. Now notice that I have as my vertex h, but in the equation it's negative h. So just the h value, you have to change the sign from negative h to positive h. k is fine, so you're going to remember that second one is just whatever you have at the end, because this is positive k, positive k. The axis of symmetry from this equation in vertex form is x is equal to whatever h is. So notice, this is x is equal to h. Inside the equation, it's negative h, so you have to change the sign to write the axis of symmetry. And of course, when a is greater than 0, it's concave up, so we know that already. And when a is less than 0, it's negative, it's concave down. Okay, so let's flip it over. Okay, so how do we take an equation that's in um, ax squared plus bx plus c form, so this form over here that you're so used to seeing, which is a, like a general form, and put it in vertex form? All right, so the first thing you want to do, step one, is you're going to put in the form... f of x minus c equals ax squared plus bx. So basically what you want to do is you want to move your 7 over in this case. So I'm going to minus 7. So I have f of x minus 7 equals 2x squared plus 8x. Basically what we're doing is we're completing the square. All right, so now what you want to do, remember when you complete the square, your coefficient, your leading coefficient, the number that's in front of x squared has to be a 1. So let's write that down. So step 2 is to make the coefficient. In front of x squared equal to 1. All right, so I don't have a 1, I have a 2. So I have to divide everything, both sides, by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. So I have f of x over 2 minus 7 over 2 equals x squared plus 4x. All right, so now we're going to com continue to complete the square. Oops, complete the square. It should be a square. All right, so now we're going to do half. Remember, we do half of 4, which is 2, positive 2. Squared is 4, and we add it to both sides. So I'm going to have f of x over 2 minus 7 over 2 plus 4 equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, I'm going to keep going and complete the square. So now I'm going to factor this, and I'm going to add these two here. So I have f of x over 2, negative 7 over 2 plus 4 is, so I get the same denominator, so this becomes 8 over 2. So negative 7 over 2 plus 8 over 2 is 1 half. Equals, and then when I factor this, remember I get the same parentheses squared, so it's x plus 2. Remember you always get uh, inside the parentheses is what you got when you did half of b. Okay, so now I'm going to minus a half from both sides. 
So I get f of x over 2 is equal to x plus 2 squared minus 1 half. Now I have to get rid of the 2 that's in the denominator. So I multiply both sides by 2. So that cancels that out, and I have f of x is equal to, so I multiply this here, you're going to put it right on the outside, 2 times x plus 2 squared, multiply that, 2 times negative a half would be negative 1. So step 4 is to put in the form f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. All right, so now I can identify certain things. So what is the vertex? Your vertex, remember, is hk. Remember, opposite h. So this is your h, so it's negative 2, comma, negative 1, because this is your k. And axis of symmetry is x equals h. Remember, so I have to change that. So remember, that's negative h, so negative 2. And this is uh, my A. Here's my A. It's positive, so it's concave up. Concave up. Okay, so let's try another one. Move everything up a little bit to get some more room. Okay, so if, remember, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So I have F of X plus 8 is equal to negative X squared plus 6X. All right, now I need to get rid of that negative 1 that's in front of the x squared. So I have to divide everything by negative 1. So I divide by negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. So I get negative f of x minus 8 equals x squared minus 6x. Now I'm going to do half of negative 6, which is negative 3. Squared is 9. Put it on both sides, so it's negative f of x. Minus 8 plus 9 equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. All right, so I have here uh, positive 1, so negative 8 plus 9. So it's negative f of x is e plus 1 is equal to factor this. So we get that square there. So it's x minus 3 squared minus the 1 from both sides. So I have negative f of x is equal to x minus 3 squared minus 1. Now I have to divide, get rid of this negative here. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1, this side too. So I have f of x is equal to negative on the outside of the parentheses, x minus 3 squared, make sure you distribute, so here and here, plus 1. Okay, so my vertex is going to be 3 comma 1. The axis of symmetry is x is equal to 3, and my a, which would be negative 1, so it's a negative, it's concave down. Okay, so last thing is we have to talk about the intercepts. So the intercepts are where the graph crosses the x-axis. So when you have a, a parabola, your x-intercepts would be here. It's where it crosses the x-axis. So let's put that down. Where? graph crosses the x-axis. All right, so to do find the x-intercepts, you make your y values equal to 0 because along the x-axis, your y values is 0, and then you solve for x. And it has to be written as a point. So it would be uh, your number comma 0 because your y value is 0, you just have to get your x value. All right, and your x intercept, your y intercepts would be where it crosses the y axis, so that would be down here. So it's where the graph crosses the y axis. So you're going to make, so where it crosses the y axis, your x is equal to 0, and then you solve for y. This one's the easier of the two. And it has to be written as a point. So it would be your x is 0, comma, whatever your y value is. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have down here. It says find the x and y intercepts. All right, so let's start with the x-intercept. So your x-intercept 
your y value, I don't like how I wrote that, sorry. So your x-intercept, your y value is equal to zero. So remember, this is your y value. So zero is equal to negative x squared minus x plus 30. So I'm going to move everything over to left to make everything my x squared positive. So it'll be positive x squared, positive x minus 30 is equal to zero. And we can factor. So this comes out to be x plus 6, x minus 5. T-chart, we get x is negative 6 and x is neg uh, positive 5. So as a point, it would be negative 6, comma, 0 and 5, comma, 0. Okay, so now your y-intercept. So y-intercept, x is equal to 0. So I have y equals, or f of x equals, uh, negative 0 squared minus 0 plus 30. So this is just y is equal to 30. And then that comes out to be uh, x is 0 and my y value is 30. Okay, so that's it. I know this was long, but it was a lot to cover today. So we'll practice in class. Have a good night.